a bump chart is basically a line chart, but the intention is to show the rank changes over time. So we are not plotting actual values or actual profit amounts. What we're going to plot in our line chart is the rank. For bump charts, we usually create a dual axis chart so we can easily see the rank changes. So let's build a line chart first. We're going to take our order date, put that on columns. We're going to take our profit, put that on rows. Let's set this to entire view. And let's take our subcategory and put that on detail. What we have right now is just a regular line chart. But what we want to do is we want to take all the subcategories in a year and we want to rank them against each other. So we can add our quick table calculation for rank now. So on our measure, on the drop down, quick table calculation, it's going to be rank. Up front though, it doesn't look right. If we hover over any of these points, it's actually going to tell us that it's ranking profit along table across. But again, what does that mean? One way to try to understand what's happening is to duplicate this into a cross tab. So let's right click on this bump chart. I'm going to right click and duplicate as a cross tab. When we go to that new sheet that gets created, it shows us this cross tab or this text table. And in here, it's a little bit easier to see the table across means it's going to take a subcategory and it's going to rank across the years. So it's going to take the profit on a year to year basis, for example, for accessories, and it's going to rank if 2022 is the highest one and 2019 is the lowest one. This is not what we want for our bump chart. What we needed to do is to look only at a specific year and rank along the subcategories. And to change that, we can go to the pill on the drop down, compute using, and the direction we want to choose is subcategory. At this point, subcategory is going to be the same as table down, but we're just going to be a little bit more specific. So on the drop down, compute using subcategory. Now we can see that this changes. It doesn't rank along the years anymore. It ranks the subcategories against each other. This is the setting we want to do for our bump chart. So going back to our original chart in here, sum of profit, compute using, subcategory. Typically in a bump chart as well, because we are ranking, we also want to reverse the axes because rank number one is the highest rank. But by default in a line chart, the one that has the highest number will be at the very top of the axes. So we're just going to reverse this. So we can right click on the axes, edit the axes, and from here we can reverse. So let's reverse this and close. So this is essentially your bump chart, but we're going to make some adjustments to make it a little bit more presentable. We're going to make this into a dual axis chart. We're going to duplicate our sum of profit that has rank. Once we duplicate this over, we're going to use circles so we can put the rank inside the circles. So let's copy the sum of profit over, control drag or a command click drag if you're on a Mac. And for the second pill, we are going to use the second marks card we're going to change this one to a circle for the other marks card. Let's go back instead of automatic. We're simply going to set this to a line because we don't want this automatically changing. And now going back to the circle, what we want to do is to adjust the circle so that it has the actual rank inside the circle. So we can copy over the rank. We're going to put this in the label. So control drag our profit. And in here, we're going to set this to be inside the circle. So in here, let's align this to be center. Right now we don't see anything because we have very big circles. So let's just adjust the size. And for now, let's make this into a dual axis chart first so that we can reclaim a little bit of the space. So for the second pill in your rows on the drop down, you should be able to find a dual axis option. Let's adjust the circle size again. So make sure you are targeting the marks card that has the circle icon. So under size, adjust this a little bit more so that we have slightly bigger circles. Now, a few more things to adjust. The second axis actually starts from zero all the way to 18. So we do need this to be reversed and we're also going to synchronize the two axes that we have right now. So let's reverse this first. So right click, edit axis. We're going to reverse this. We're going to right click again on the second axis and we're going to synchronize. Now we may not want to show the axes as well. So we're just going to hide the headers. So right click on the axis, uncheck show header. So it's going to look like this. Let's make one more adjustment to the circle size. It's still a little bit big, be something like that. And maybe adjust the label font. One more change that we might want to add is to have the label for the subcategory on the line ends. 
So let's do that. So let's go to the line marks card. And from here, we're going to change the subcategory. Instead of detail, we're going to set this to label. You can do this by clicking on the icon or simply dragging subcategory to label. Let's adjust the settings for label. So click on label. And this time, perhaps we want line ends. So it's going to show up on both places. So at this point, it's just a matter of reformatting and refining this more, perhaps changing the font styles, the font sizes, removing some grid lines, just to clean this up a little bit more. 